Hello everybody, let's draw together and procreate. Today we will be drawing this uh, flat style floral composition, not exactly this one, I will be drawing spontaneously and I hope that you join me. This tutorial is very beginner friendly, so even if you have just little knowledge of procreate, you can uh, draw this illustration with me. I will be teaching you how I plan and how I design uh, my illustrations, particularly my uh, floral compositions. I will also show you how I decide on the colors and how I work on the color thumbnails. Then I will show you my sketching techniques. And last but not least, we will be coloring the illustration and I will be showing you exactly how I um, structure, plan, group my layers in Procreate. If you're here with me and you're watching this mini tutorial, I would like to ask you to comment in the comment section below magical florals so that I know that you're here and you're profiting from those tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that uh, bell button for more Procreate uh, tricks and hacks. Okay, let's start drawing together. I am first creating a canvas by hitting this uh, plus uh, sign here and I have uh, pre-saved uh, dimensions for my canvas. I usually work in a canvas with the following dimensions, 3000 by 3000 pixel. We can also create this canvas from scratch by using this um, upper right corner icon with the plus folder. We can just make sure that we have pixels over here and then we type in 3000 by 3000 and the DPI is 300. Then we hit create and we have our canvas ready. Now the first step is planning and designing our floral composition. I would like to show you a technique that I have developed for myself over time. There's one more YouTube video here on my channel that I posted maybe two or three weeks ago where I show you three of my past illustrations with floral compositions and I explain to you the kind of the rationality behind uh, how I plan <laughs> my floral compositions. So if you would like to listen only about this uh, planning process, you can head to watch that video. I will also include all the links in the description box below. I created actually a class about uh, drawing bot botanical compositions. It's in German and it's uh, on Skillshare. I think the subtitles will be available soon for English and for other languages. And in that class, I share a folder with my favorite brushes. However, the majority of the brushes that I'm using are native to Procreate, so you don't really need any fancy, expensive, <laughs> extra brushes. I start my sketching process by using the good old uh, 6B pencil and I choose a color that is either dark brown or some sort of gray, like I happen to have here a brown color, so I'm gonna stick to that. And now I'll be showing you a few kind of hacks that I'm using to um, design my composition in a very balanced way. I have a few brushes here that are stamp brushes. I created stamps um, for a circle, for a square, and a square and circle template. You don't have to have those stamp brushes, you can uh, just use the, use the shape tool in Procreate to, for example, to create a circle. So I'm having the 6B pen, so I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna draw a circle with this brush and then just hold my finger and it will snap into a perfect circle. Perfect, but kind of imperfect because I'm using the 6B pencil, it's a little bit uneven, but it will serve our purpose. Then by hitting the move tool, the arrow here, I choose the option fit to canvas and I have it right um, in the middle, in the center of my canvas. I can use it as my frame. I can also lower the opacity here. I can use it as a frame for designing my floral composition. What does it mean? It means if I, for example, do the sketching on an extra layer above, I can draw different flowers in my floral compositions. And just an example, and I can keep it within that circle. So when I'm done, my composition is very uh, nicely framed. I have another example in my gallery here. This is another illustration that I created 
created using that uh, circle template. You can also make the circle a little bit smaller so that you have a little bit of space to the edge. But I think you know where I'm getting with this. You can use it for nice framing for your illustration. I'm gonna get rid of that layer. I will also clear this one, just erase that one. And then I'm going to head back to my brushes and I will use this square and circle template, which like I said, you can also draw on your own or you don't have to use it at all. I will make sure that it fits to my canvas and I already have the opacity lowered. I will make sure it's at about maybe 15, maybe 20% so that it doesn't bother me too much. And for today's illustration, I will be drawing um, a nice botanical composition that will stay within that circle will, with a little bit of uh, spacing to my, what's it called, the edge of the canvas, exactly. I will be using uh, circles to indicate flowers. What shape of flowers, what petals, what details, I don't care about it yet. I will be just using those circles, bigger or smaller, to indicate that I want flowers in here. Sometimes flowers are at an angle. For example, here, this rose, you can see it from the side view. Sometimes we can see the flowers from the side view. And I usually represent that side view by drawing a triangle. No, normally, um, what I will mean by that is that it's going to be a flower from the side view. And then smaller berries or smaller Filler flowers will be smaller, smaller circles. For leaves, I will be either already using the simplified shapes for the leaves. Normally, you will see that in a minute, I use arrows to only indicate in what directions will the leaves go. The first thing I want to put on my canvas is one big central flower. I really, really don't care <laughs> about the shape because I can refine it later. I like to position my flowers in th uh, three or in five. I think this uneven number, oops, <laughs> my flower disappeared, um, is very pleasing to the eye. So I want one smaller flower here and maybe one bigger flower here. And you will notice that I positioned them in the center of my canvas. So those were my main flowers and I put the filler flowers on a separate layer. I'm going to merge it later on, but in case I change my mind, it will be easier for me just to swipe to the right, uh, sorry, to the left <laughs> and to delete that layer. That's why I like to work on multiple layers before I merge them together. Um, so moving from the center to the outside of the canvas. I would like to have some smaller flowers over here, perhaps. I'm only indicating that there might be some sort of a cluster in here. And it's always nice to put something similar at a diagonal. So maybe there will be also something like that over here. I'm not sure what shape yet, but I will make this decision later. Right now, I'm just working on the kind of like the general balance of the composition of you. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you can imagine that. I'm going to go back to the main flowers. I feel that I would like this one to be more, as you can see, I'm really, really messy. You can also go to the eraser in case it's too much. Let's go to my favorites. I like to use the hard airbrush as my eraser. Let's check if the size is okay, if it's not too small. Yeah, I'm gonna have this side view. Oh, let's do it like this. There will be a big central flower, which is this one. Then there will be like a side view extra flower here. And one more that will be more in the background. Okay, here we have our fillers. And now on a separate layer, I would like to indicate uh, the direction of leaves. So the leaves will also spread from the center to the outside of the canvas. I would like to have a nice cluster of leaves over here, the bottom left edge. 
and also here maybe I will draw one two three arrows over here zack, zack, zack. if this is a little bit um, illegible for you you cannot read it well then of course you can work in uh, different colors and you can already go to some sort of a bright turquoise or bright green and mark your arrows which will indicate the leaves in green you can also make your brush a little bit bigger it doesn't matter that you're a little bit messy you will be refining everything later so I want... yeah it's actually a good idea to change your color because now you know okay in the center I will have my blooms and now you want to see okay is this ratio of leaves um, is it good? Am I happy with it? I think I want a lot of leaves here, so I'm just going to indicate everything with the arrows. I'm happy with how it looks, so I'm going to merge. I will get rid of this. I'm going to merge and change the colors to, again, see if I like how my flowers are spread. There's one here. Let's take this orange color. I wanted one with the side view here, like this. Uh, I can always change my mind, of course. Maybe yellow here, maybe this one will be a little bit smaller. And this is it. This is the first stage. We only worked with the forms. I'm going to lower the opacity of the framework even further. And then I'm going to lower the opacity of those shapes layer. And then I'm going to go above and I will start refining the shapes of my uh, flowers. For example, let's have a look at this um, big flower here. Okay, I'm on a new layer, just making sure. I would like a flower and by the way, I'm drawing just from my memory. If you want, you can work with reference photos. You can look for some inspiration, for example, on Pinterest, or you can take your photo camera and you can just go out there <laughs> to uh, snap some pictures and then to use those pictures as reference photo. Mm, it's a very nice idea when you're traveling to new places to take a lot of reference pictures of the flowers, of some plants that you've never seen before, so that you can try out them in your illustration work. And before, again, before I merge, merge everything together, I keep my blooms, uh, my elements in separate layers because it's easier to work this way in case I want to make it smaller. For example, I'm hitting the move tool. It is on uniform. Um, I'm able to resize it in case I change my mind or even I can swipe to the left and I can duplicate it. It's nice to make a version like a like a smaller version of the big flower maybe rotate it a little bit and to place it uh, next to the original central flower uh -huh, it's this one I'm gonna use the eraser to erase a little bit of that flower here so that it's really kind of behind the main flower and then when I'm happy I'm merging them then on the new layer I'm still on the 6b pencil I would like to see that side view flower. I'm, I'm really improvising here, by the way. I'm just gonna indicate that there's a stalk of my plant. Mm. And now I would like petals that look kind of wavy. Still a side view like this. Maybe there will be a little bit of details over here. And I'm still trying to simplify my shapes. That means that there will still be time for refinement and working on the sketch further. But I find this step to be the most important step of them all because if you plan it nicely here at the beginning, then it will be easier for you to go to the final coloring, for example. And you will not have to go back or you will not have any regrets about the shapes that you have drawn. You can always switch off the forms to see if you like it. I think I like it. <laughs> I'm going to leave it on a separate layer. Maybe again, I will change my mind about, you know, if I want it maybe at a different angle over here, or if I want it smaller, but that, right now I'm happy with it. 
Now another layer below will be for our fillers. I'm even thinking it's a might be a nice idea to combine it with some fruit. So I'm still on the eraser. So I'm just going to draw a few kind of berries or maybe they're gonna be strawberries over here. Maybe one over there and maybe also here below. I'm really improvising again. I'm not looking at any reference photo. If this is too much, then you can always switch off the layers underneath or an even better idea, you can go to a different color, for example, a brighter color. I can draw again on my, I think there's gonna be small strawberries or those wild strawberries that you see in forests. Let's draw some stalks as well. Zuck, zuck, zuck. And we're going to leave it like at that. We will draw all the leaves later on. And I wanted also a few clusters yeah, over here. I can also switch it off entirely. I'm still on the layer with the filler berries. Um, I can also flip the canvas, uh, not flip, move it. And just maybe draw such shapes over here of smaller filler flowers. I can always change my mind later about their positioning and about their um, size. <laughs> okay, those look very nice. And now the stalks as well, very, very roughly. Going back to my shapes to see if I'm happy. Okay, and now the leaves. I will choose um, maybe a darker green color. And now I will improvise a little bit with the leaves shapes. For example, this one here, I would like to have those classic leaves. Okay, I feel those strawberries need a slightly different shapes of leaves. I will stay within the same color because for me, the sketch is still very readable. It's okay, I can read it. In case, again, it's too overwhelming, I can always change, um, for example, the color. Okay, we have those leaves here. I think it's getting a little bit busy. So I will swap my color and I will choose a different shade of green. In case of doubt, you can always create a separate layer and draw your leaves on a separate layer. You can then always change your mind. And now I'm starting with the stalks. As you will see, I'm following roughly the arrows I drew. Like I indicated that my leaves have to go outside from the inside to the outside. I start with the stalks, still very roughly, and then I decide on the shape of the leaves. This one is very organic, let's say. How does it look? I think it looks very beautiful. I'm happy with it. Here there's a little bit of white, like too much. So I will add the leaves here. And now I'm really happy about, you know, making this uh, choice to, um, to draw in different colors because otherwise everything would be very hard to read. Okay, so I'm still having a little bit of space here and here that I need to populate with something. I also wanted some leaves here. So maybe I will draw leaves in a similar shape but perhaps those one, those are directly behind the flower and maybe those, they will have some stalks over here coming out. It's very, very messy, but you don't have to worry about it. Maybe one bigger leaf like this. I remember that my arrows, remember, were going to the outside. Maybe one more leaf like that. Let's merge together our leaves. If you want to make uh, it a little bit more readable, you can go to the eraser. I'm on the leaves layer and you can also erase bits of your leaves, especially where you have your flowers that will be in the front to gain a little bit more visibility of your sketch. This is fine, this is fine. Okay, and uh, this is the first stage of my illustration process. Now I'm happy with it, so I'm merging it together and 
just as a reminder, I started with a framework. It could be a square. I'm not sure if you can see that, so I will go back with my opacity. You can either draw a circle with the quick tool or you can draw a square to mark where your um, elements should not go beyond. So my elements should not go too much beyond that circle. Then I drew the forms that roughly stay within that circle. After lowering the opacity of my forms, I was able to work on my sketch. And this is the final sketch. So in this video, we tackled the first step of drawing our flat style floral composition, namely the whole design stage and coming up with a pleasing and well-balanced floral um, composition using some frameworks and using some simple shapes. This uh, tutorial is getting a little bit long, so I will split it into three parts. And the second part of the tutorial will be about choosing the colors, choosing the color palette and uh, designing a color thumbnail so that we have an illustration that is also pleasing with regard to the colors that we chose for it. I hope that you join me in the second part. See you soon.